mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah! Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah! Do you believe it? What a mighty God we What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Let the Holy Ghost move. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it again. What a mighty God we what serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Angels, Angels bow, before, bow before, him. before him. Heaven and earth adore Oh, what a mighty God what we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it again and let the Holy Ghost move. What a mighty, mighty God, God we serve. What a mighty God, God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Worship him. Sing it again. Hallelujah. What, what a mighty God, God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Well, do it again. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Come on, let the Holy Ghost move. Let the Holy Ghost move. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Do it again. What a mighty God we serve. We may sing it till Jesus comes. What a Hallelujah. God we serve. Oh, let him bless you in this place tonight. Angels bow before him. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God to do great things in this place. What a mighty Hallelujah. God believe God as you serve. sing it again. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. There's power in the blood. For there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood oh, of the Lamb. Oh, blood. there is power, power, power wonder-working power in, in the blood, in the blood oh, of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power to God. in the precious blood of the oh, Lamb. Let the power yes, fall. there is power, Power, wonder, work, 
working power in the blood, in the blood, in the blood, in the of blood. the Lamb. Hallelujah! There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious Hallelujah. blood of the Lamb. Take it again. There's power. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power come on, in let the that blood. Power come down. Of the land, of the land, yes, Let's get there powerful. is power. It's power, revival time. Power, wonder working. Power, God, in this in place. The precious His blood is in this of place. the land. Take it again. There's oh, power. there is power, power, wonder working. Power in the blood. In the blood of the land. Of the land. Yes, there power. is power. Power, glory, glory, glory. working power in the precious blood oh, of the land. All oh, there is power, power, wonder working Thank power you, Jesus, in the blood, the in the blood oh, of God. the land. Hallelujah. There is power, power, wonder working oh, power in He's the precious us. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power Thank you, Jesus. in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, Glory power, to God. Glory wonder to God. working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's all praise Him. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him your best praise offering here tonight. Hallelujah! Lift up holy hands! Lift up holy hands and praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Send a mighty revival, Lord! Send a mighty revival, Lord! Send a mighty revival, Lord! Hallelujah! And let it begin in me! Let it begin in me, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. I think we're going to sing that again in a moment, but I need to tell you a testimony about the power in the blood. A number of years ago out in Oregon, we had a missionary come by. We were uh, uh, at some kind of missionary meeting, and this missionary that was speaking had been to Cuba in his early days of his ministry. And it was after Castro took over and it was communist uh, Cuba. And the, they had taken the Bibles from him, taken the songbooks from him in the churches down there. And so he went to speak in this church. And they started singing. They didn't have a songbook. They had one leaf out of a songbook that somebody had torn out and kept and the name of that song was, There's Power in the Blood. And he said they sang Power in the Blood for 15 minutes. Then they sang Power in the Blood for 30 minutes. See, we're not there yet. Then they sang Power in the Blood for 45 minutes. Then they sang Power in the Blood for an hour. Then they sang Power in the Blood for an hour and 15 minutes. We're not near there yet. Hallelujah, set at ease. An hour and 15 minutes in this missionary sitting there, and by that time he thought, enough's enough. Are they going to let me speak tonight, or are they going to just sing power in the blood? And while he's sitting there thinking about that, all of a sudden there was a noise in there. Snap, crackle, pop. I mean a tremendous noise. What was happening, they had brought someone that had been in an automobile accident in the bed and set him there at the altar. About every bone in his body was either broken or mangled. And after an hour and 30 minutes of singing, there's power in the blood. All of a sudden, God started putting those bones back together, snap, crackle, and pop because of power in the blood. Sing it again. There's power in the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood, Hallelujah. The blood of the Hallelujah. Lamb. There is power, oh, good. Tell you the power, power in the blood. Somebody power get excited in, the in this place tonight. Blood oh, hallelujah. Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, There's wonder power in blood, brother. Power in the Glory blood. to God. Of the Lamb, there is power, power, oh, the wonder-working power Thank in you, the Jesus. precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the You need your healing, start believing. Of the Lamb, power, 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 power. power. Power, wonder-working power in the precious Woo! blood of the Lamb. Oh, let's go again. oh there, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in, in the blood, blood of, of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power Let in the fall. precious blood of the oh, Lamb. Oh, there is power, He's power, wonder-working power in glory. the blood For miracles. of the Lamb. Hallelujah. There is power, power, oh, power wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. One more time. There is power, Power, wonder working power in oh, the blood, God. in the blood of the Lamb of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power Woo, in the precious oh, blood one more time of again. the Lamb. Oh, there is power, Come on, reach out and power, touch wonder working Come on. power in the blood. Let it prepare in the your heart tonight. Of the land. Whatever that need is, let's go. There is God. power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the one land. more time and i'm gonna preach oh there is power Woo! power wonder working power in the blood i said there's power of the lamb oh, there is Hallelujah. power power wonder working power in the precious oh, we gotta go one blood more. of the lamb i know there's power Power, wonder-working power in the blood, you, in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight that would you would move in this place by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that as we sing these songs and these choruses, there's power in the blood, that that power would work in this place tonight. Lord, that the miracles would take place, the healing power would take place, that lives would be touched, lives would be blessed, uh, families would be blessed, kids would return home, husbands would be saved. Hallelujah. We just pray for a mighty outpouring in this place tonight. Hallelujah. We loose the Holy Spirit in this place tonight, Lord. Have your way in this place tonight, Lord. Let the anointing, let the anointing that breaks the yoke and lifts the burden be in this place tonight up on the speaker and up on the congregation. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Woo! Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Do we sound like barking dogs? Woo. Woo. Somebody accused a bunch of Pentecostals of barking like dogs. I think they was just praising the Lord. Woo. Woo. Sounds like a little old chow wow dog, don't it? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's time to praise the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his people. 
I'm telling you, there's more that can be done by people praising God than we ever realize. That's why the devil tries to keep us quiet. Amen? Just come on into church, sit down, and be quiet. Let the preacher do it. He wants us all to praise God. Amen? The title of my message tonight is Thunder, Lightning, and Fire. Subtitle is God Chasers. My text is Isaiah 10, 27. His burden shall be taken off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck and the yoke destroyed because of the anointing. That will be my text for every time that I preach this week and on Sunday night. And let me make an announcement now on Sunday night. The title of my message on Sunday night will be It's Supernatural. Sunday night, I will share with you an experience I had when I was out in Missouri, when I was going out to speak at Jim Baker's Morningside Church, of how Jesus visited me in the, my bedroom at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to tell you, he will turn you upside down when he comes into your bedroom at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll be sharing that with you Sunday night. We're going to be praying for the sick, and we're going to believe God for miracles that night. Hallelujah! What happens when you catch God? What happens when he actually shows up? God is waiting for someone whose hunger exceeds their grasp. Someone, someone who will stay until the presence comes and the power falls. Do you really want to know God? Do we really want to connect to his power? Sunday morning, Connie was telling us about an experience that she had, I think it was early in the morning, still in bed, the experience she had talking with the Lord. And what she would come up with with his presence was that I want more of Jesus. I want more of Jesus when we get hungry to the point where we want more of Jesus. That's important in our lives. Uh, then we're going to see thunder and lightning and fire. We're going to catch God, and God is going to catch us. That previous Saturday when Connie had her experience, if it was on Sunday morning, I have a routine. After everything else is done, I get right into my devotions when I get up. My devotions usually last 25 or 30 minutes. I have a read through the Bible in a, in a year, a Bible. And I've been doing that for 25, 30 years. If you don't have one of them, you ought to get one. It's a new experience. I can remember when I just opened the Bible and read here and then read there and skip over there and didn't know what I was reading. It really helps when you read all the way from Genesis to Revelations in a year's time. It makes a big difference in your life. Anyhow, this particular morning, instead of lasting 25 or 30 minutes, the first thing you know, I looked up on the clock and I had been there for an hour and five minutes with a heavy anointing of God, praying in the Spirit, laughing in the Spirit. I'm telling you, me and God had a good time, Connie. I want more of God. I want more of Jesus. I want more of the Holy Ghost. And then I usually go down into the basement and do my exercises. That particular morning, I spent the next two hours in the Word of God and praying, getting ready for these meetings that I have up here this week. I want more of God, and I hope that's what you want tonight, is more of God. I'm talking about a, a book that says God Chasers. It was written in 2005, so it must be an experience in this Houston, Texas church a few years, maybe before 2005. It's not something that was 50, 75, or 100 years ago. This is fairly recent when God moved in in a church in Houston, Texas. The church had two services, one at 8.30 and one at 11 o'clock. At 8.30, it says his presence moved in. The worship leader crumbled to the floor sobbing. I don't know if the worship leader got through the first song or started the first song. All it says is the worship leader fell to the floor, crumbled to the floor, sobbing. And the pastor got up and he read 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which is a good scripture for us here tonight. When my people 
not the people of the world, but when my people who are called by my name, that's usins, my people that are called by my name will humble themselves. It's a hard thing to humble ourselves and let God do something with us. We've got that pride that's in us that we just won't give in and humble ourselves before the Lord and humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. Seek is something a little more harsher than praying or a little more harder than praying. When you're seeking something, you're really going after it. You really want it. Some of you men in here, you remember when you was going after that girl that you wanted to marry. I mean, you was really seeking after her. You wanted her bad. You were seeking. You just wasn't playing games. You were seeking after her. That's what God wants for us. Later on in life, you may have thought you wouldn't wish you hadn't seek so hard, but <laughs> that goes both ways, by the way. <laughs> Humble themselves and seek his face. And listen to this. Turn from their wicked ways. He's talking about us. He's talking about his people, not the people of the world. He's talking about the church, his people. Seeking his face and turning from their wicked ways. Any revival that was other worth the salt in history, you'll find out that there was a, a strong sense of conviction and people repenting of their sins. I'm talking about Christians heading for the altars and repenting of their sins for an outpouring of God. You say, oh, don't, oh not me. I don't sin. Sure you do. You're living in a world today when it's full of sin. You can't turn the television on without sinning. If you're not blind, you're sinning. If you're not deaf, you're sinning. If your mind's still normal or working, you're sinning. You go into a grocery store, it's lined up right at the cash register with magazines, with nudity almost in every magazine. You can't even watch a commercial anymore in mixed company. You can't watch the news. They'll have a lineup of pretty blondes on there with the dresses almost up to their... You figure it out. So when we say we don't sin, we need to take another look at ourselves. I'm going to tell you, judgment's got to begin at the house of God. And we want a revival where every one of us is going to have to be willing to come up here, fall on our knees, and repent of our sins and say, My God, forgive me. Humble me, Lord. I want to turn from my wicked way. He said, Then I'll hear from heaven, and I'll heal your land. The preacher preached that, and then the pastor said, The word of the Lord says, Stop seeking his benefits. And seek him. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Stop seeking the benefits and seek him and these things will be added. I'm afraid we've come to the place in our Pentecostal churches where we're always seeking the benefits. And if we seek him, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will come our way. They'll be added unto us. And all of a sudden, there was a sound like a clap of thunder that echoed all throughout the church. Instantly, the pastor was literally picked up and thrown 10 feet. The pulpit fell and busted, split right down the middle as if lightning had struck it. You say, oh, that's not God. Exodus chapter 19, Moses is up on the mountain. The people couldn't even come to the border of the mountain. The power of God was so much on that mountain that the people couldn't even touch the border. God said if they did, they'd die. But on top of that mountain, the scripture said there was thunder and there was lightning and there was smoke. And then it says the Lord descended in a pillar of fire onto that mountain. 
thunder, lightning, and fire. God chasers, it's time for the church to catch God. It's time for get to the place where God will make his appearance. Oh, we all know that we, and we said wherever, wherever two or three are gathered together, there he is in our midst. But I'm going to tell you there's a whole lot more to it than that. We've got our, I'll go there. And there was a little connotation about the pulpit. It says the pulpit was made of acrylic plastic, engineered to stand tens of thousands of pounds of pressure per square inch. Yet it split in two. A thunderclap went through the church. Where I live, we had a real bad thunderstorm a couple weeks ago. I was sitting in the house, it didn't even look like rain. And all of a sudden, bang! Sounded like someone had dropped a bomb and exploded right over my house. The scripture says God holds the lightning in his hands and he throws it wherever he wants to. Didn't he say that? Well, I'll tell you what, he threw it at that tree next to my house and bam! And only about two-thirds of that tree is left. A third of that split off and gone. And he announces those storms with thunder. Lightning, thunder, and fire. Oh, do we need the lightning and the thunder and the fire? But this is just the beginning of the story. The people begin to weep and to wail. You mean in church the people begin to weep and wail? Yeah, they did. You know why? Because of sin. Sin in their life. They could feel it. The presence of God hit like a bomb. Would you like to see the presence of God hit like a bomb? Oh, we need an explosion here in Houston Town Church of God. Of course, all the other churches need them too. We need an explosion. The pastor was slain in the spirit for two and a half hours. This was what is in the book, God Chasers. The aisles were filled with people slain in the spirit. The people were climbing over pews because the aisles were filled full with people under the spirit. They were climbing over the few pews to get to the altar, not to pray, not to ask for something. They were getting to the altar because they were convicted as Christians as full of sin. And they were at the altar repenting of their sins. And not only were they repenting, they were calling out, we want to be baptized in water right now. You know, the scripture says, repent and be baptized, now shall be saved. Too many times, thank God we've got a baptism, water baptismal service coming up. But that's one of the things we neglected in our churches is water baptism. Statistics says only a fourth of our converts are being baptized in water. And what's even worse than that, it says only 18% of our converts are being baptized in the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in tongues. Is it any wonder we've got no lightning, no thunder, and no fire? How will somebody shout? Woo! The 8.30 service went into the 11 o'clock service. I said the 8.30 service went into the 11 o'clock service. The people at the altar wanted baptized right away. The pastor was still under the power. He was out. They carried him off to his office. The, the, this, this preacher was there because the pastor had called him to preach on a Sunday. And in the middle of the week, he called him again. The pastor said, this is something I almost, I'd never done before, to call and have somebody preach for me two Sundays in a row. He said, I feel led of God to have you come and preach again next Sunday. Next Sunday, he came and preached. Middle of the week on Wednesday, he called the evangelist back. He said, I've never, never done this. Called the preacher, the evangelist to preach three Sundays in a row. I want you to come back Sunday again and preach. And here's what was happening when he came back to preach. The evangelist was carried off under the Spirit into his office. The people all wanted baptized. Baptize. The altar was full of people repenting. Baptize me in water. I went baptized in water. 
The evangelist didn't want to take on that for himself. He wanted the pastor to do it. So he sent several people, one at a time. You go and check out the pastor. He didn't come back. Another one, you go check out the pastor. He didn't come back. Another one, you go check out the pastor. He didn't come back. Finally, he picked one of the senior associates. You go check out the pastor. This time the associate went out there, and he didn't go in the bar in. He just opened the door and peeped in. <laughs> Guess what he saw? Pastor laying out over the floor. All those that went in to see the pastor, slain in the spirit, laying there with him. He came back and he told the evangelist that. The evangelist said, you go back and get him. The man said, I'll go back and get him, but I don't think I'll return. Lightning, thunder, and fire. Oh, we've neglected the Holy Ghost. Where God says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And we've neglected that Holy Ghost. And we've seen the power go south. And we wonder why our churches are so sick. Hallelujah. And you don't see the presence and the power and the lightning and the thunder and the fire. is because we've neglected the power which is the Holy Ghost. Say amen or oh me. Because I'm fixing to lay it on. Amen. Whoo, Hallelujah. So the evangelists went ahead and just started baptizing people. They must have had the tank ready or maybe having a, I don't know how, but, they, but he was baptizing people. And there was a big open field next to the church. And it just packed, become packed with cars. People coming from all directions. They kept pouring in to the parking lot. And it was a ball field, filling up the ball field. I mean, we talk about the conviction out here on the highway that people driving by would be convicted and have to stop and turn in. People were being convicted by the car roads, stopping and turning in to the parking lot and the ball field. They were drunk. They were falling all over the place. The ushers had to pull the helpless people away from the doors and lay them in the hallways. Yet the people kept falling, and they kept repenting when God showed up. People that was coming in didn't go look for a seat. They come in, and they went straight to the altar and started repenting and saying, I want to be baptized in water. The Sunday 830 service lasted and lasted, went through the 11 o'clock service, went through the lunch hour, 12 o'clock, Went through 2 o'clock, went through 4 o'clock, went through 6 o'clock. Ooh, it's just like power in the blood for an hour and a half. Woo! We wonder why we sing power in the blood for an hour and a half. I'm going to tell you what, we need to get that power of the blood. We need to get to the place where we've got the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost, and he can move up on us. It's good preaching. I'm allowed to get saved tonight. So are you. Oh, I know you're saved, but I'm going to tell you, every one of us got a little, got a little we can put on the altar. How many got a little bit? Don't, don't raise your hands. But they went to the altar. They wanted to be baptized in water. Talking about that time limit. 8 o'clock at night, they were still there. 10 o'clock at night, they were still there. Midnight, they were still there. 1 o'clock, they were still there. 1.30 in the morning, 16 hours later, 16 hours laying in the presence of God and being baptized in water, 16 hours later, they were just getting ready to leave. And you know what happened? They went straight into a revival, lasted for five weeks, seven nights a week. That's still not quite as good as the 1,100-day revival they had at Azusa Street just after the turn of the 19th century. It lasted for 1,100 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And just like here, they didn't have any songs. They didn't have any singing. They didn't have any music. They didn't have any preaching. I mean, that was all. God came in and destroyed their program. Come on. How would to God God would start coming in to destroy our program? Come on. We've programmed sometimes to the point we've programmed the Holy Ghost out. Oh, we got it down pat. We got to 
music down pat. We got the singing down pat. We got the preaching down pat. We even got the altar down pat. Give me 10 minutes. I'll give you 10 minutes, Lord, at the altar. You, can I tell you something? You ain't going to see a revival with 10 minutes at the altar. Right, amen. amen or oh me. Amen or oh me. And we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Maybe that's one of the things we need to repent of. Amen? That one day caused a five-week revival, seven nights a week, as the power of God fell in that place. People stayed not for the programs, but for the presence. Isaiah 40, 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm going to tell you, if God wants you, he'll get your attention. I believe I'll take my coat off and preach. Early days of Pentecost, Pastor Jimmy, you weren't preaching until you took your coat off. And then you weren't really going until you took your tie off. God will, God will find you. Moses was on the backside of the desert, minding his own business. And all of a sudden, there was a bush started burning in the middle of the desert. And it just kept on burning, kept on burning. Got Moses' attention. See, God will get your attention one way or the other. God will get your attention. Moses said, I think I'm going to turn aside and see what's causing that bush to burn. If he didn't want to call, that was a big mistake. And when he turned aside and got to that bush, the Lord spoke to him out of that bush. That'll boggle your mind, won't it? The Lord spoke to him out of that bush and put a calling up on his life that, that, that was one of the greatest calling man has ever had. When he went to see the burning, we need a burning bush experience, folks. Are you up to a burning bush experience? Huh? A burning bush experience. He turned aside and went and seen him at the burning bush. And God spoke to him out of the burning bush. God ruined their program that Sunday in Houston, Texas. He really showed up. How about the hunger? Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. One day Jesus made a triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. And let me just add live a little bit here and tell me what I tell you what I think might have happened. The priest was there in the temple and they, he was preaching and probably preaching and praying and probably praying for the Messiah to come, preaching that there's a Messiah coming. And there was a disturbance out in the yard and they stopped and said, what's that disturbance? Who's creating that disturbance out there? And someone said, you see that little donkey out there? It's the man that's on that little donkey that's creating the disturbance. Jesus! Jesus, come. Jesus, come. And he's already there. I'm telling you, he's already here. The Holy Spirit is already here. It's just a matter of us accepting it. And believe in God for, to do what he says that he will do. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We all need an Isaiah chapter 6 experience. Which ties in with this. Thunder and lightning and fire. Isaiah, whether he was caught up into the heavens with the Lord, or whether he had a vision, or whether he had a dream. I don't think he was sure of what he had, but one thing he did know, he had an experience with the Lord. Like I had with the Lord in my bedroom at 4 o'clock in the morning, not quite as exciting as it was for, for Isaiah. But he was taken up into the throne room of God, where the cherubims, the sing, six winged angles, the fiery ones, was all flying around singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And there was so much of the power and the presence of God there that the posts in the place actually were shaken. How would you like an experience like that walking into church and the pillars are shaken by the power of God? 
I'm going to tell you, lightning, thunder, and fire, God needs to shake the church up today. He needs to shake the church up. It was the Pentecostal church. It was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost at Azusa Street that brought the church of God, the Assembly of God, the Four Square. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And back in them early days, the power of God was just flowing. You know why it was? Because everybody was getting filled with the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in tongues. They were so full of the power, they was praying for the sick and they was getting healed. They was praying for sinners and they was getting saved. They was having a revival and the church was packed. Mary Etter, female evangelist, had her great big tent. She took it into a town and she parked it too close to the, to the city. They come out and said, you've got to move the tent. You're making too much noise. She moved the tent further out of town. The authorities come again. You're still making too much noise. And they give her a ticket. They give her a citation. You know what the citation was? Excessive religious excitement. Now, you tell me a church you've ever been today that if they give you a ticket for excessive religious excitement, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict you. Come on. Woo, there's power in the blood. Let's get that power flowing once again in our church. Isaiah had that experience. He was in the throne room of God. The pillars were shaking. The angels was there. He was a prophet of God. Yet he said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell among the people of unclean lips. I believe we can say that here tonight. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I'm preaching among the people of unclean lips. I'm going to tell you, and you're willing to acknowledge that the Almighty God, we can kiss a mighty Holy Ghost heaven sent, eye opening, limb straighten, Holy Ghost revival goodbye. Woo! Telling you that's such good preaching, I've never heard any better. I might just go into it for a living. He was in the throne room of God where those hot coals were being kindled, and there he was. And all of a sudden, one of those angels came by in that condition that he was in. Woe is me. And took one of those coals, hot coals with the tongs and took it over and put it on his lips. And the Lord says, who will go? And after that happened, he says, Lord, here I am. I'll go. I'm going to tell you, when we have an experience like that, we'll again return to the power of God, the thunder and the lightning and the fire. Oh, my Lord and my God, we need the fire. We need the thunderclap in our churches. I was saved in 1955, and I'm going to tell you what. Back then, we probably had 30 minutes of singing. We probably had the 45 minutes of preaching. But I'm going to tell you what, when it comes to the altar service, it exceeded the 45 and the 30 combined and would last for an hour and a half or two hours until God got done. And I mean, people wouldn't be just come kneeling at the altar. They would be falling to the altar. They would be falling in the aisles. There would be men that had their handkerchiefs out, praising God and worshiping the Lord. There would be some of the older ladies that was, would pray in the midst of all that until the power come down. I mean, the p women would shout until the bobby pins flew. Some of you don't know what a bobby pin is probably. I mean, I mean, they had an altar service. They had early day preachers preach at a, a con convention one time. They brought preachers in that had, uh, that had been down in the early days, 20s and 30s, preaching in those days, and they wanted to see what it was like back then. And those preachers, every one of them without exception, said everything we've done, the singing, the preaching, the offering, everything we've done geared toward a climax at the altar. When we get there, the lightning's going to flash, the thunder's going to roar, and the fire's going to fall, and people's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of God, and we're going to see more seals, more come out of the wheelchairs. We're going to see the, the walkers lining the wall and the canes on the wall because the power of God is in this place. I mean, they came to church on Sunday thinking there's going to be just an ordinary day in church. Woo, hallelujah. Lord, I praise you tonight. I just pray that you'll do that in this church. It's time for the Houston Town Church of God. I mean, I'll tell you what. Woo, imagine meeting you here. 
<laughs> God's looking for a place to show himself strong, and he's looking for it right here in the Houston Town Church of God. He says, I can't find it in town. I can't find it in Fulton County. I found it in Houston Town. He didn't send the Pastor Jimmy up here to enjoy the snow. <laughs> Although we'll let him do it. But he sent him up here to set Houston Town, McConnellsburg, and Fulton County on fire. God's tired of 21. God's tired of 30. He's tired of 39. He said it's time to get those numbers off the board and start going through the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Fill this place up. Bust this wall out. Go to the farmer next door. Say, we don't have places to park. We want you to give us two acres. God will go before us and soften that farmer's heart. He'll say, take five. Can't got time to talk about it, but overseas in the Azores Island, when we needed a church, building a church for the Azores people, we said, God, send us someone in to give us a piece of, give us a church. We weren't getting nowhere. It was 99% Catholic. Every time we'd get a lead, the priest would squelch it, saying, if you give that, those Protestants land for a church or build them a church, you'll be excommunicated from that church. Are you know what that means to a Catholic? Hell. They won't give them communion. They won't serve them in any way. They'll take their jobs from them. I'm talking about in a Catholic-controlled country, not in America. So we started praying, Lord, you send someone to us. You know what? There was two brothers. They were builders. And they came to us and they said, we're building a house. But they said, if you keep it quiet, we'll build that as such that you can make a church out of it. And we'll sell it to you for a church. Well, we were already raising money for the, for the building. Well, the priests got a hold of it. They scared the one guy. They were both drunkards. They were drunkards. They drank a lot. The priest got a hold of it. He scared the one guy. He got out of it. The other guy, I guess God really got a hold of his heart. He bought the other guy out. And he still said, I'll build this and I'll sell it to you for a church. And he did. So what's two acres to the Lord? Fire, lightning, and the power of God. I'm going to close with this. And Tommy Bates told this a week ago, a Sunday or a couple Sundays ago. A lady in his church was 82 years old. When she was three years old, she went through a fire. And her eye was destroyed. I mean, the skin had grown over it. There was nothing there. She had been blind from the time she was three, and she's now 80 years old. If I remember correctly, this, uh, this guy... I think he was an evangelist, but he just dropped into the service. I don't know if you remember that or if you saw it or not. But anyhow, Tommy asked him to preach. And he get up there to preach, and he says, I've been fasting for two days, I believe it was. And he said, the Lord spoke to me this morning. And he said, I'm going to heal somebody's blind eye. Anybody in here has a blind eye? Come up. Here come this 82-year-old lady, blind in that eye for 79 years, skin scarred and over that eye. And they prayed for her. That old skin was removed, and a new bright, flashy eye appeared. She had a new eye, 20-20 vision, after 79 years. There's power in the blood, folks. Power in the blood first. If we're going to see revival, it's going to begin up here at the altar. We can advertise till we're blue in our face. We can preach, and it's good preaching. You can't say anything about the preaching. We've got a good preacher. Too bad he likes the cold weather but and the snow. But outside, outside of that. It's going to be at the altar. It's going to be at the altar. And not in 10-minute periods. Somehow, we've got a hunger for God. Like Honey said, I want more of Jesus. I want more of God. And so we get that hunger for God. We're going to just see it like it is. We're going to continue like it is. God said, it's time to go. It's time to move on. Hallelujah. God's
ready to flow right. I want you to bow your head with me. I want to talk to people here today. Maybe you're not ready to meet God. You're fooling around with your salvation. You're messing around with the world. Maybe you've got a problem that you can't solve. But tonight you know that you need Jesus in your heart. You need Jesus. Hallelujah. And you'd slip up your hand and say, I want to get right with God tonight. I want to get right with God tonight. Is there one? Tonight I want to get right with God. I want to get right with God. Very quickly, slip up your hand. God bless you. You can put it back down. Someone else. I got sin there. I want to get right with God. Come on. Come on. I've been fooling around. Heaven, I, I, I know I'm just not right with God. Anyone else? Very quickly. Very quickly. Anyone here tonight with a problem, with a situation? You got a habit you can't break. You got a habit you can't break. I'm not.